Hello, friends, and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, after last week's unmitigated disaster trying to play Satisfactory Plus, I wanted to go back to playing Minecraft for a little while just to freshen things up a bit. I've been mainly playing Big Fork on this channel so far, which is my own personal mod pack, which I've had for years. It's actually based on a really old version of Minecraft, 1.7.10, if I remember correctly. So I wanted to play something a little bit fresher here. The goal here, of course, for me is to create a new mod pack sometime later this year with more modern mods in it. But that means I need to learn a little bit more about some of the more modern mods that are around these days. I'm still really just comfortable with Tinker's Construct, Mechanism, all of these old things that have been around for, you know, years and years and years. So I'm going to play some more modern mod packs on here for a little while and try some things out, see what works, see what I like, see what I don't like. Now, on the server I play on with my friends, we're using all the mod slice of pie, which is still a little bit older, but it's introduced me to some new mods that I think are interesting. There are mods like Create that just look absolutely amazing and have that mechanical feel that I think fits really good into Minecraft. Tinker's Construct has largely been replaced by mods like Silent Gear that people really love these days. There's all these new things that I just really wanted to try out that I've been seeing in that mod pack. But Today, we're actually playing something different. I've seen a lot of people talking about the Enigmatica series. Enigmatica 2 Expert still gets a really large number of downloads, but today we're actually playing Enigmatica 9, which is based on Minecraft 119. So a really, really modern version of Minecraft. That also means that a lot of the mods that are in it are gonna be really, really new and modern. But a lot of my favorites are still in here too. Immersive Engineering, Mechanism, all of these mods that I've come to know and love and really rely on in a lot of my builds. But it'll also give me an opportunity to push my limits and learn about a whole bunch of new things in a very forced way because it has a great quest system as well. So with no further ado, let's dive right in. So as with most of my new Minecraft builds, I usually try to find a village first to set up base in. It's a great source of a lot of free early game resources, and it's already got farming set up for you, you usually have a blacksmith shop, all of the things you need to have to get the ground running. Now this town I found is especially great because it already had an immersive engineering hut, so I could get a bunch of starting gate items. It also had a hut for this game mod called Pneumatic Craft, which I haven't actually played with it all. I don't know anything about it, but this looks really cool. It's already got a bunch of really nice custom looking machines. And I think this is going to be the place where I'm going to set up shop. Now I went around and gathered up a bunch of resources from around the town and started checking off the first few basic quests that require no items at all. So first things first, I'm gonna to wanna to start building out a mine. Now I note that this mod has something called stone hammer from immersive engineering. Now, I don't remember a stone hammer being in immersive engineering. Maybe I've just missed it all of these years, but it seems to act very much like the Tinker's Construct hammer. So I think this will give us some parity there and will help us by mining things out in a three by three space. So being able to make that with basic items from the start, it's just sticks and a hammerhead that you make out of just a couple of pieces of stone. This is a wonderful starting game item already. So I'm gonna use this and start digging our way down into a new mine. So already I'm getting some amazing new terrain generation that I haven't seen in any of the Minecrafts I've played before. We've got these amazing new caves now with things called dripstone that drip uh, and are stone. But just looking at these caverns, it's just, they've added so much to the game. I'm really loving how this looks and feels now. So we're gonna mine up a bunch of resources really quick. Now I am already seeing one of my little pet peeves in mod packs, and that's when people don't actually reconcile their various ores. If you have two different types of tin, you should really take the time to rewrite your recipes and your ore generation so that you only end up with one type of tin that people are mining. It's just obnoxious to have to have two different types that you're, you can't stack. That's really not fun for the users because it just fills up your inventory with random stuff. So if you're a mod pack author, do take the time to use some sort of cube.js recipe or otherwise to reconcile your ores so that you don't have duplicate ores in there. It's just one of those things that just really adds to the immersion and makes the gameplay a little bit smoother. And there we go, already our first diamonds in the game. And a decent number of them. 
It's four right off the bat. All right, we're off to a good start. So although the idea here is to try out as many new mods as possible, I think I want to start with something a little bit familiar just to get my base up and running. So I think we'll pick create mod as the place that we want to start our work. Now, I haven't played create in a recent version. I've only played create in a much older version of Minecraft, whereas before you got iron ore as a block, apparently now we're getting raw iron when we mine it. So. I'm curious as to how this impacts the various mods. Create, looks like we can still crush raw iron and make crushed iron ore, but I'm not seeing the uh, grinder there, which is what we normally use. I wonder what happens with, oh, the enrichment chamber. So we get three for four from the enrichment chamber. That's so we're no longer getting an ore doubling out the gate with mechanism. That's that's interesting. That's disappointing. Purification gets us doubling oxygen. And that's easy enough. That's easy enough to get to. But it is a shame that you're losing ore doubling out the gate. Hmm. All right. So this is going to require a little bit more exploration to figure out exactly how all of these things are going to work for us. Okay, so I've already found a whole lot of andesite. I found a decent amount of copper, probably more copper than I'm ever going to use. Just a little bit of zinc. Now on the way over, I also picked up some kelp so that we could start using that to dry it out and turn that into belts. So to get started, I think we really need to build the millstone first, if I remember correctly, and probably the mechanical press. I don't know if we can do the crushing wheel yet, right, because we don't have the mechanical crafter, but I think hand crank, probably a depot for the press, a basin, a mechanical mixer, millstone. Yeah, I think at a minimum, that's where we're going to need to start. So I've added those to our to make list. Now, I also want to do a fan because I think I want to do washing if at all possible. So let's add that. Can I do water wheels yet? So it looks like the water wheel doesn't require brass in this pack. So we definitely want to make some of those. We'll need some large cog wheels. We'll need some shafts. And we'll probably want to change the direction of things. So we'll do some gearboxes while we're at it as well. So let's go ahead and make a bunch of these. And then we'll start combining them in interesting ways and see what we can come up with. Okay, so it also looks like the cobblestone recipes that we used to have to be able to get extra iron no longer really exist either. I can get it from gravel. That's... That's still there. So we need to grind gravel in a crusher to get there, or a millstone, I guess we can get that. And we can get the cobblestone from automated drilling. So that could be a reliable source of infinite iron for us. And I think we can do similar with gold, can we? Gold nuggets, there's gotta be a way to do that. Uh, crushing. Ah, oh, there we go, red sand. And red sand, as I recall, can be made relatively straightforward from this. I think from terracotta, right? Right. And terracotta we can get from clay, and clay we can get from also crushing gravel. Okay, so we have a loop here to get at least gold and to get iron. Well, good to know. So maybe the first thing we do is set up a cobblestone generator and start building everything up from that. We'll do that and create first. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to do this real quick. If I remember correctly, what we need to do is have the lava flowing down onto the water, which is adjacent. Whoops, don't need that. Ooh. And one way to do that is, oh, I don't want that either. To have the lava above and then put the water next to it. I think that is the correct-ish way to do this. So put that there, put this here, put that here. Oh, don't need that one. 
Okay, so I think in theory, this is the right pattern. Put the water in there. Which, can we do this with? Yeah, just like that. Okay, great. So I think this is how this is supposed to work. And then if we put, uh, can we do this? Oh. Like that. And like that. That should do that thing. So the lava should drip here into the water here and make, yeah, that should be making into a cobblestone, right? Right. Okay, and then that'll drop into whatever we have below it here, which in this case, I'm just gonna put a chute here. And I guess I'll just put for right now, this barrel down like so. And then the only thing this is missing is uh, a drill. So to do that, we'll build uh, up here. Put the drill right here, like so. Only that's the wrong direction. Can I rotate that with a wrench? There we go, just like that. And just for testing purposes, I'm just gonna use the hand crank, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine, right? Perfect, now it makes stone. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. Perfect. And let's just go ahead and put one more piece on top here so it doesn't burn the house down. Okay, so stone generation is happening. Now to make sure it actually works, we should be able to drill it. And in theory, yep, two pieces of cobblestone. All right, perfect. All of this is now working. So now all we have to do is automate it. So let's knock the hand crank off and we're gonna need a source of power. So that's relatively straightforward here. Now, we're gonna want this to go in the same direction as where we're going to be moving it off of the belt because we're not just gonna leave the cobblestone in this. We're gonna do something with the cobblestone. So I assume we're gonna probably wanna either go this way or this way with it maybe. Hmm. Maybe we go this way. I don't think we're gonna run out of room any time too quick. So we want our power generation over here-ish, I'd assume. Now, I just learned a new way of doing power that I had not seen before using the water wheel sideways. I'd always done it so the water wheel would flow this way and you'd put a piece of soul sand at the back and that would cause air bubbles to come to the back side and that would give you the maximum velocity. But what I just learned just a few hours ago while digging around on the internet, Uber Sui says you can do it this way instead. Sideways, sideways. like so. And by doing that, you can get maximum rotation by going this way in a circle, which I think is a fascinating solution to the problem. I've never done it this way. So let's try that out. And there we go. Through the power of the boop, we now have a perfectly working system that is totally flawless in every way, right? Right, sure, totally. So from here, we can do a lot of other bits of automation. So the first thing we're gonna want is for this to do milling from here. Now, I think we, yeah, we made a millstone. So we actually want this to drop straight into that and then power the millstone off of this contraption somehow. So let's set that up real fast. Now I believe I can just put this here like that. And it should go in there which really isn't so hard. Hmm. But if I had one more spot, yeah, like that, I can then use my gear box here. Oh, no, that's not where I put you. Like that, and then rotate it a few times and eventually it should all just work, right? Perfect. Yep, 
see, there's all the uh, wonderful gravel coming out the other side. So we just need a barrel for that. And that should give us gravel. Now, the next thing to do here, instead of putting the chute there, is to put this into a fan, which is then washing so that we get these iron nuggets. So the bulk washing here. It's only a 12% chance off of gravel, but considering we have unlimited gravel, that's not the worst thing in the world. So we just need to set this up. And I think it can wash it even when it's actually inside of the water. It doesn't just have to be blowing on it, if I recall correctly. Okay, so I've learned that this is exactly the number of components with this exact torque that we can run off of a single water wheel. Any more than this and the device becomes overstressed. So we're gonna have to come up with an alternate plan for this fan than running it off of this. I think the way to do that then is to instead run it off of a second water wheel that we can put behind us here. But we just need to line this up properly first. No? There we go, just like that. And then the power for this will come from, I think we'll want to do it like same way as this. So a couple of blocks down, a couple of blocks under. Like so, and like so. That is sucking, not blowing. So we just want to reverse our water wheel. Like that. And there we go, now it's blowing. Now, if I remember correctly, we should then be able to put some water here. And look, it already has turned this into flint, and eventually we should then get iron. And there we go. We just washed roughly two stacks of gravel, and we have, well, I had eight already, so 16 iron nuggets. That's not bad. So about one in eight we're getting nuggets out of that. We also got a whole bunch of flint, 38 flint in that time. So roughly one in four, which isn't bad at all. So now we have a source of iron. All right, so our washing is now inserting into the brass funnel with the filter on the front that you can see here that we created. And that's filtering down to only accept iron nuggets and flint. So we now have an infinite source of iron. Perfect. Hey, what are you doing out during the day, buddy? Okay, so there we have a very basic iron generator using only the create mod. But anybody can build this, right? This is enterprise architecture. You all are expecting something bigger than this, right? So here's the bigger version. This factory currently with all of these multiple buildings is getting me about a single iron ingot per second. It's not great by overall standards, but it is infinitely scalable. Let me show you. Now for the overall design of the system, I'm actually going back to how I build things in Factorio. You all probably know this pattern. Each building has a discrete purpose and it processes the various ingredients into the next step in the process. So the first building is just a cobblestone generator. This whole thing, all it does is make lots of cobblestone. The second building is nothing but turning that cobblestone into gravel. So cobblestone goes in, gravel comes out. And the last building, just takes that gravel in and turns it into iron nuggets by washing them. So pretty straightforward. In every case, all of these buildings, we can infinitely expand them in this direction. Now that doesn't mean we'll have to move some of these houses, but it gives us plenty of room for extra growth. So over here, we have my power setup. This is just using a basic boiler system, nothing real fancy going on here, but I've built it so that I can continue growing in this direction over and over. There's plenty of space here, but we're already getting a whole lot of power off of it. Right here, you can see it's generating 294 stress units, and we're only using about 40K with this whole setup right now. So originally for power, I had built a tree farm contraption. Now, I like using this sort of a layout with the minecarts rather than the rotating ones that most people use with a windmill bearing. 
I think this works a lot more effectively because you can grow it in that direction by adding rails or by adding more rows in that direction. I just have to move my windmill. But that didn't work out so well. I wasn't getting enough charcoal to keep these powered at full speed. So instead, I went with a massive lava dripstone factory. So I think a lot of people know this trick already. If you put lava blocks above any sort of solid block that's fireproof and then dripstone dripping into cauldrons, this will produce plenty of lava that you can then use to fuel your blaze burners. And as you can see here, it's still growing. I'm basically generating a whole lot more lava than I actually need. I could probably double or triple this with no problem. So one windmill like this with four sails that are 64 blocks each will power 64 pipes perfectly. And we can see that right here, zero remaining capacity. So that's pretty neat. That worked out kind of perfectly. So I need to add more windmills if I wanted to increase the size of this lava farm. But again, I could continue growing this out in this direction. So that's generating lava for me. The lava is then dripped into this system here where it's filling up buckets. So the full buckets of lava go into this item vault. They're then picked up by these mechanical arms and fed to the blaze burners. Then the mechanical arms drop the empty buckets back into these chutes, and then they go back into this system to get refilled again. So as I mentioned, this is more than enough lava for the amount of blaze burners I have. I have nine blaze burners under each of the boilers. The boilers each are powering nine of these generator arms, so 18 in total. And that gives us a cool almost 300K of stress units. So these casings have a shaft down the middle, and I'm using that to power all of our various buildings. We're running off of each of these into the buildings to power them. So I've also got a cutoff on each of the buildings so we can completely turn off production if we get backed up or have too much going on. Inside the first building is our cobblestone factory. So this is a pretty standard cobblestone generator. You can see we're actually producing a lot more cobblestone than we need here, which is good, but I can probably turn this whole building off. We've got drills on top and then channels of lava with these waterlogged cobblestone stairs. Now using the waterlogged stairs means that you're not getting flowing water and therefore it's not going to turn our lava accidentally into obsidian. Here in the middle channel between these two sets, I've got two sets of stairs. I can't find a way to waterlog something and keep it in the middle without one side having flowing water and turning the other side into obsidian. So I've just got an extra space in the middle here, but it seems to work fine. Then of course, all of these various chutes pipe out everything onto our conveyor belt and those go outside. But because of these encased chain drives on top, along with the drills going in this direction, we can continue to grow this out as far as we need. Then the same thing is true here for our gravel factory. All of these various pieces of cobblestone are dropping into chutes down onto our crushing wheels. So because of the way that we have this chute layout here, we could indeed add more crushing wheels this direction also and continue to extend our belts. Let's take a look inside at that. So here we just have the chutes going down and the crushing wheels woo, a little close for comfort on either side. And then at the very bottom here over on this side, that's where our main belt is that goes back out. So it runs underground here. So we could continue to extend this as far as we need. The same thing is true for our iron washing facility. This was the bottleneck for a long time and I couldn't come up with a really great way to deal with this. So here's what I did to solve it. I'm using these brass tunnels all the way down, which basically just act as splitters, just like any standard belt splitter that we would have in Factorio or Satisfactory. Then on the receiving end, we have a filter saying only allow iron nuggets. Now underneath here, we have brass chutes, which are pulling the flint, which is the other byproduct of this process, and dumping it straight into lava because quite frankly, we just don't need it. We're not gonna use that flint for anything. If we wanted, we could also pipe that out as a second export from this building. But for right now, I think this works fine. We're not losing anything. Now, this 
set of brass tunnels has a single filter on this side saying iron nuggets. So only iron nuggets are allowed out on this side and only iron nuggets are allowed in on this side. And by connecting them this way, these belts, let me show you on this side, these belts actually run all the way to the edge here. And then I have a filter here that basically says bricks, which means it's just not gonna let anything out. So since these can't exit out of here, the iron has to go out this side onto this little teeny tiny belt that's right here. So all of these are flowing in and back out that way. So this actually works pretty well for merging. So basically this is working like our satisfactory splitters on this side, and this is working like our satisfactory mergers on that side. So everything is coming back out our main bus that we've created here. So this pattern is actually super fun and I really like it. Uh, I might be using this a lot more in the future. And again, we can continue to grow this infinitely in this direction as long as we, uh, I guess, move some of these houses out of the way because this washing doesn't actually need the flowing water here. It works just as well without the flowing water now that the fan is just blowing. So that's the other way that we can do this is just by having no water over here, we're still going to get this washing effect from having the blower in front of the water all the way on that end. So I think we can keep this going a lot further down here. I haven't actually tried to see how far we can take it, but it works great at eight. So I assume we can go a lot further than that if we needed. I don't know what the maximum limit is on tunnels at this point in Create. Now going into each building, we're also using these tunnels as if it was in Satisfactory as a splitter as well. So brass tunnels here. So we have our main bus continuing of our cobblestone and just taking what we need, splitting it off and sticking it into this building just to get our gravel out. Similarly, our gravel splits off here, goes into the building, and we're still running in to our main bus here, our gravel. And then of course the iron ingots as they come out are just going straight in here as well. Now I could go ahead and set up another building here for compressing the iron nuggets into iron ingots, but instead I'm just using functional storage as compacting drawers. So this makes it so that I can pull out nuggets or ingots or iron blocks if I want. And then I'm just using the standard functional storage one by one drawers for each of my other two types of item, my gravel and my cobblestone. So that works pretty darn well. These should go off to a more bigger storage facility of some sort at some point. But for right now, this is just temporary storage so I can get my ingots out or gravel or cobblestone as I need it. So that's how I'm gonna leave it for now. Now for the design on all of these, I wanted to go for this sort of factory that had been repurposed look by using these cobblestone walls to kind of look like it's filling in on some windows that might've been there. I thought that was kind of a neat look. I'm also using the Create train doors and fittings wherever I can, along with these brass lanterns from Supplementaries, which I think look really nicely. Now, for some of these windows, instead of using the glass trap doors that come with Create, I'm instead using the train trap doors, just because I think they look kind of cool. And particularly on the front, what I really like about them is it makes it look like there's expansion space here. So these are just these same trap doors for the train, but it kind of makes it look like you can continue to grow this. Of course, I'm also using the standard placards that come with Create as well to show what items are coming out of which doors. So there you have it. There's my upgraded cobblestone generator gravel factory and iron factory. Right now we're getting about an ingot every five seconds or so. So there's a lot of improvement here that I could do to grow these out. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of space here to grow. So right now it looks like the washing is probably my biggest bottleneck. As you can see from the flow, the gravel is moving pretty well. The cobble is all backed up. So really, I think that washing facility is the one that I need to increase. So the next upgrade I would probably want to make is to split off another line off of the gravel into the gold nugget production. So that supply chain is a little bit more complicated. We need a few more buildings for that to take the gravel, crush it into sand, wash the sand to get clay, bake the clay to get terracotta, break the terracotta to get red sand and then take the red sand and wash that to get gold nuggets. I think that's the full process to get gold nuggets out of this. 
So it would be a lot more buildings that we would go off in this direction to do. So I might try and do that in between episodes, just because that's a lot of building that's gonna be necessary to get it, and it would take up a lot more space over here. But I do wanna keep playing with this pattern because I think it's super cool. So there we have it, my infinitely scalable factory using only create with Enigmatica 9. I really like how this came together. I think it's a really cool looking build. I still want to do some more things with it, like maybe putting those boilers inside so they're not just hanging out in the rain and it has an actual power station, something to kind of match these other buildings that I've already created. But I really like the look and feel of this, and I think it came together well. I also haven't really seen anybody building this way. I generally see people making these really compact, super tiny, efficient little spaced buildings that fit in a really tiny footprint. And they work really well, but generally the throughput isn't super high. I haven't seen anybody doing this sort of splitting off method that I'm using based on what I do in Factorio and Satisfactory. So maybe this is something new for people to start playing with and trying and seeing how it can work out for them as well. I also would love to continue to grow this main bus further down and spread this out even further to see how far I can take it. So leave me some notes in the comments or links to videos if you all start using this pattern. I'd love to see what other people are doing with it for building out their factories when they're doing this sort of a generator style thing. But that about does it for this episode of Enterprise Architecture. Join us here next time where I'm going to start playing with some of the other mods in this pack. Maybe Pneumaticraft or something like that. One of these mods that I know nothing about and I've never tried before. So it'll be an exciting adventure. We'll see you back here next time. Bye friends.